since this is a public webinar, we have a lot of recurring audience as well as new audience. So, who is your speaker today? Who am I? My name is Andre. I'm Heimdall's cybersecurity solutions expert. Been with Heimdall for over five years now. Did just north of 5,000 cybersecurity meetings and just shy of 1,000 implementations. Uh, if, uh, if my numbers are still correct, you have my contacts on the screen. And if you fancy this better, you can just scan this QR code and this will take you to my LinkedIn page so that you can hit that uh, button to connect. Now, there are three things that uh, in a webinar, uh, there are three things that are unknown to you as an audience usually, like who's your speaker? Why is this webinar happening, right? Why is the speaker, why? Why did this organization chose this topic to talk to you about? And last but not least, who's the organization? We're gonna cover two of them right now. And the last one, we're just gonna cover it at the end. So why did we choose this topic for you? Now, this topic is something of a, let's say urgent interest for everybody in the industry for three reasons. Let's see what are those three reasons. First reason is cybersecurity personnel is scarce right now and this is basically getting worse unfortunately for a bunch of reasons qualification is not there as it should be uh, the stress and so on is high the need of cybersecurity has uh, has exploded right so you have three things that are pushing towards this scarcity effect that's happening right now you might have heard me talking about it it's getting worse so you might hear me talking about it again in the future budgets that we have for cybersecurity and for these people are cut so to say optimized if you want to talk corporate language and all frozen right they're there but they cannot be utilized unfortunately and there's also something called as choice overload or over choice or choice paralysis how do you want to call it it's basically when we have so many options and everybody is pulling us in, try mine, get mine, and so on and so forth, that you don't know what you actually need at the point. Everybody has uh, advantages to their solutions, right? But uh, at the point, we need to step back and see what do we need. So why is this important for you guys? You, you might ask me, Andre, so what? So what if cybersecurity personnel is scarce? So what if budgets are frozen? So what if we have the choice overload? I'm going to tell you what happens. Personnel costs more all of a sudden, or your current team will ask you for raises. Second, we need to do more with less, which is usually a bit of a challenge. I know that less is more is a concept that everybody applies, but sometimes doing more with less is not uh, the ideal thing. Imagine you have 20 nails to hammer into something, but you no longer have a budget for the hammer itself. You will take a rock, you will try to hammer in the nails, half of them will work, half of them might actually get crooked at the point, right? So that's a bit of a challenge and the choice overload. This is raising the difficulty for you in picking the right solution for you, not what the market says is the right solution. You, all of the organizations are unique, even if they're in the same industry. So we need to look at how to pick these solutions and XDR is one of them because everybody is talking about XDR right now. Now, I have a question for you. I told you why I think you are here, right? But why are you actually here? And I will open this as a poll to everybody right now. Let's see if I can find the poll in the new GoTo webinar. Yes, I can. So why are you here? And we have five options. I want to optimize my cybersecurity spending, right? Uh, let's not say I want to cut my cybersecurity spending. I want to learn more about XDR. I just like spending time on Andre's webinars. I'm competitive. I'm here to win cyber trivia. And last but not least, other, please do let us know what that particular thing is. Okay. Let's see. What do we have? I'm just going to give it 15 more seconds. I was hoping somebody votes. I just like spending time on Andre's webinars. That's my short uh, uh, um, shameless ego plug over there. 
I'm joking, guys. It's about you. It's not about me. The, all the sessions are about you. That's why I ask you for feedback at the end of the webinar all the time, because it's about you. Okay, let's see. Closing the poll and sharing the results with you, which is very, very good. The majority of the people here, and this is a multiple vote selection, 97% of voters have said that I just want to learn more about XDR. Then we have, I just want to optimize my spider, uh, cybersecurity spend. I like spending time on Andre's webinars and I'm competitive. I'm here for the cyber trivia, which is very, very good. Okay, let me get back to the presentation now. Okay, let me close the poll space. Questions, chats, I think I got this covered. By the way, guys, this is the first time I'm using this new platform from GoToWebinar. So bear with me if I don't find something. I, I promise I will at the point. Good, let's get back to the actual deck. Okay, so we know why I wanted you guys here. You know why you're here. Let's talk about the agenda. We are gonna cover today. We're gonna look at the recommended cybersecurity tool set and the implications that these carry, right? Because at the point, cybersecurity is no longer optional for us. Most of the companies are obligated by regulatory compliance to have a minimum tool set. And we will analyze what that tool set is. We will determine three profiles we find in cybersecurity. And actually, these three profiles apply to any industry. And we will analyze those previously mentioned implications through all three lenses. We're going to look at XDR and how does this help you, including a very, very quick, like five minute tour of Heimdall's XDR. And last but not least, I'm going to have a Q&A session in which you guys can hammer me with all the questions that you want. Next, a bit of housekeeping. Uh, questions are more than welcome along the way. If you guys don't ask, I'll stop and ask you guys. So uh, there is no way you cannot be interactive in this session then most active participants can win a Heimdall Home Premium License. The post-webinar survey is required for that, so you have a tick mark, the check mark in there that you need to put. It's like, uh, would you like the chance to win this? You don't need to do anything else. Just do that check mark, and I do a raffle, and one person that did the check mark will win the license. Cyber Trivia Game with licenses as prizes. Webinar survey, this is the go-to place for feedback. This helps me make the session better for you because the session is for you, not for me at the end of the day. And also for follow-up, this is where you can book time with me. You can book a demo, no strings attached. LinkedIn, connection, chats, emails, more than welcome. Please do utilize them. And now, I said cyber trivia. Let's start with a cyber trivia question. And the question for you guys is, how many cybersecurity jobs are available in 2023? You can Google it, you can do whatever you want, and I'm gonna wait for your responses on the chat or in the question box. I have no, I do not discriminate. I'll check both of them. Um, and you can use in hundreds of thousands and millions and whatever you, you see best. Okay. If the chat doesn't work, please use the question box. And I see things coming in the question box. Perfect. Okay. We have Richard, 3.2 million. We have Dave, a quarter of a million. Alf, 2 million. More than a million Christian. Uh, okay. Let's see. Chat box is not active. Thank you, Rasmus. I'll get to, to the bottom of this. Okay. 3.5 million. One plus million. Okay, just 10 more seconds. Okay, 3.5 million. Charles, 1 million. Nurul. Okay, let's see. Let's see. More than 1 million. Exactly. Guys, I'm stopping the question. The answer for this is approximately 3 million. Let's see who was the closest to this. I believe it was Richard. So Richard with 2.5 million, you are the winner on this one. Uh, guys, the certificates for the win might come in 24 to 48 working hours from now. So uh, please bear with me. I need to create them. As a source, you might be asking, where did I get this metric? Forbes, Trellix, Computer Weekly, plus the uh, 2022 Cybersecurity Workforce Study, which looks at what happened in 2022 and does the predictions for 2023. Now, 
let's move on and uh, let's see what I have next for you. We're, we have been talking about cybersecurity, right? But cybersecurity, aside of its definition, has three pillars. And I believe you guys recognize this little chair. I believe my grandma was calling it a stool. And whenever I was moving on it and moving the balance from three, uh, three legs to just two, she was always yelling at me and saying, you're going to fall, you're going to break the chair. Well, usually I fell at a point, right? Now, if we look at the, the, the base of the chair being cybersecurity, what our company is basing their security on this is the foundation right we the people are the ones that sit on this particular flat surface and what does uh, what are the pillars the three legs that sustain my flat surface well people is the first pillar without people you cannot do cybersecurity. and i've heard about ai 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 even with ai you would still need people and talking about those regulatory compliance right by regulation, you need to have somebody responsible of cybersecurity. Then you have processes. And then last but not least, you have products slash technology, right? So this is basically what we're going to cover today, the bit with the products. But never forget, guys, cybersecurity is not just made by products. It's a three pillar um, environment, people, processes, and last but not least, products. Now. Moving about, uh, moving to talk about the products. What what does uh, the law in most of the countries and in most of the industries force us to do? Well, they need us to have approximately five cybersecurity products as an obligation. Uh, by the way, let me see. Can I see the chat at the same time with this new go to webinar? Ah, uh, yeah. I think I can actually do it this way. Perfect uh yeah changes in technology usually make this happen but nevertheless i can run the presentation from this screen that's good so what are those five products that regulatory compliance makes me have to check mark the boxes right so it starts with a vulnerability scanner because you need to know what is vulnerable what does this do it looks within your assets right computers network and so on and it detects missing things like missing configuration faulty configuration, uh, then you also have the situation with missing patches, right? And so on and so forth. So this is telling you where do you need to start work? Then you have an antivirus that reacts all the time to the threats that are already in the computer. This is reactive security. Then you have a form of proactive security. However, it needs to also have category filtering, right? Content filtering, category filtering, you name it. Choose the way you want to name it. But this is obligated to have a form of internet security. Then you have patch manager, which by law you need to have it. Uh, this would actually go hand in hand with the vulnerability scanner and assist it, right? Vulnerability detects what's missing, patch manager applies the patches. And then last but not least, you need a place for all this data plus other telemetry, which is uh, the forensic data from the computer to gather right and this is called a sim or a security information and event manager depending on your industry and on your preferences you might actually have a bit more in this equation right you might need security on admin rights you might need email security you might need a SOAR that automates actions based on the sims intelligence and so on there are lots of things over here that uh, that you might need but this is just because you want it, right? The law usually obligates you to have these five. Now, of course, countries, regulations, it might differ slowly, but this is like the norm. What does this mean for you? Because that's what we're talking about, right? Well, if you look at it, this means the following for you, right? Let's take it one by one. It means you need five demos and five initial reports right? Because you need to study the market. Then you need about three proofs of, of concept or trials, let's call it like that, plus three final reports, because it's always the rule of three when you're studying the market, right? When you're doing market research, you're testing three of them to see which fit your profile best. 
Then you have one implementation and configuration. This is the moment where you already purchased the solution. Then you have one set of processes for day-to-day -day management or operation and training that needs to happen. Now, this is the funny part. You multiply this by the number of products that you need. If we are to expand further, let's take the stool out of the equation, right? We use the graphic and the naughty stool as Dave is saying. Okay. Uh, good. Then, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I got caught off by Dave's comment with the, always the naughty stool. <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. Then. What does this mean for us? Why the five demos, three POCs, one implementation, one uh, set of day-to-day -day management, configuration, training, and all of that? Well, this means we're doing the multiple Y technique here. Time invested in discovery, which is time. We will discover further what that implies for your team. Then you need money and time invested in implementation. Then you need time invested in training and day-to-day -day operations with the products of choice. And last but not least, you need infrastructure resources. Now, guys, let's take into account that a business is not made only for security, right? A business is made to achieve their commercial objective. Now, this is time that you divert or resources that you divert from that core process, achieving your organization's objective, and you put it in a supportive process because without security, at the point, you might be in the situation that MGM was and Caesars were like a week or two ago, right? You stop all operations or you hinder them. So this is what it means, right? And this is the, uh, again, it's by law. You need to have these in lots of the industries in lots of the countries, right? Now, let's go even further a bit. Let's do again a cyber trivia, right? Get ready, guys. Open the question box so that you guys can type in, right? Are you ready? The question now is how much time in average does it take to fully implement a SIM? Let's see. How much time do you guys think it takes? Okay. Eight months, six months, two years. Okay. Three months. Okay, six months. By the way, if multiple people hit the question in about 30 seconds, I will give you uh, all the people that hit the exact answer will get the licenses. It depends, three months. And we're stopping. Oh, Graham says two days. Uh, Graham, could you tell us which SIM are you using? Because I believe this is revolutionary if it's two days. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> it depends on the size of the organization. The people that won this are the people that said six months. And let me call you out loud. So we have WG, six months, and we have Christian, six months. Okay. Now, <laughs> another response, way too long, which is true. Well, it takes, in average, around six months. The good ones, you can implement them in about three months. There are some, exactly as Mukesh rightly said, that take more than one year because after you implement it, it's a very complex process. If you guys ever want to talk about Sims, just let me know and we'll do a, a topic on it. As sources, Rapid7, Cybersecurity Intelligence, Blumira, and SenseOn. These are coming from these guys. Okay, let's go further and let's see. So I have two winners in this one. Thank you guys for, uh, for helping me on this one. Now, let's define what are the three profiles that you usually, from a, uh, from a high-end overview, helicopter overview, you see in organizations, in all industries, right? So you have the strategic profile, you have the tactical profile, and last but not least, actually, these are the building blocks of all the operations, you have operational profile. Let's see how do we define these in cyber. The operational profile, this is your day-to-day -day cybersecurity operators that fill in all the various roles and functions that build your cybersecurity program, right? Roles might be cyber specialist, analyst, uh, uh, SOC, right? Level one, two, three, ethical hackers, cybersecurity engineer, architect, and so on. So these are the people that actually make things work. Then you have tactical. Tactical means these are the hands-on leaders that work sometimes side-by-side -side with the operational 
and they take the uh, programs that are cascaded from above from the strategic and they implement it and they make sure the team can handle it. These are your information security officers, cybersecurity directors, cybersecurity manager, team leader, head of SOC and so on and so forth, right? And strategic, last but not least, this is the higher cyber, highest cybersecurity leader in your organization. At the point, this might be the CISO, the information security officer, the cybersecurity director of, or head of cybersecurity. You might see some roles repeating here because it depends on the organization, right? Not all organizations are the same. Somebody might not need all profiles. And we have partners here. We have MSPs here. We have CISO. I see some IT managers. We see a lot of people in, uh, in the house, which is super nice. Sometimes, guys, you might be a mix of all these three profiles together. Like an MSP is usually a mix of all of these three together. Now, imagine the job on those guys, right? You are the unsung heroes. Uh, a hand of applause for everybody in the room that is covering all of these three one by one. Okay, what's next? Well, let's put some icons for these people. We're going to have the big boss here. This is the CISO, the cybersecurity director or team lead and the operators right let's look at those issues that are uh, poking us with the cybersecurity products right and let's see what this means for each of these by the way if you guys have time something to share just uh, come on use the chat use the question box if not i'll just plow ahead taking a bit of hydration break okay so what are these problems that we're facing right we have too many tools that usually don't communicate with each other. We have frozen or declined budgets, heavy and lengthy implementation, technology mismatch, and complicated day-to-day -day operations, right? Let's start with the most important part of any cybersecurity team, which are the operators. When you look at too many tools and too many tools that don't talk to each other, what do you have? Data? and operational fragmentation and alert fatigue, which means if I have five different tools, right? And if I don't look at a, a, a dashboard that sees them all, I have data fragmented in five different tools. I cannot fully and holistically interpret an alert if I don't have those layers talking to each other because each person will see something and each person might start responding or reacting in a way but if they don't see what's happening at the patch level or at the network security level or at the antivirus level and so on, they might actually not take the best course of action. Now, the next part is what happens to the operators when budgets are frozen or declined? Well, that's more pressure due to inefficiency, right? Because you are still expected to do your job. However, if uh, you don't do your job, that's when you get the attention. Usually IT people and cybersecurity people are that type of job where you never get attention when you do a good job, right? Because nothing blows, nothing explodes. But when you do a bad job, or it might not be you doing the bad job, that's the thing. It might be that you don't have something to secure that particular little layer that you were compromised through. Now, you will get all the heat in that moment. And I saw some, some people uh, putting their hands up, so thank you for that. What does it mean to have heavy and lengthy implementations? Well, a lot of manual work, and also for the operators, they will need to change and retrain and requalify in a lot of tools. So they will get a fear of change, even if they're aware of it, or even if that is subconscious. Technology mismatch. That means ineffective workflows and managing legacy tools just because one part of the company or one part of the assembly line or anything like that needs to have windows 95 right and we have somebody uh, in the audience jens coming with something interesting topic we discovered the same issue in the telecom industry at the time of that the internet exploded in the late 90s History repeats itself, Jens, and I believe that all of us from the session can agree with that. And that's actually a good, uh, a good parallel over there. Thank you. Then, last issue. If you have complicated day-to-day -day operations, what does this mean for the operators? 
higher mean time to detect, higher mean time to respond or resolve. That means frustration, pressure, and burnout, right? Burnout being one of the most dangerous things in cybersecurity right now. And we're gonna get to a bit of a research on burnout. Then let's go to the second level, people that feel the pressure both from above and below, right? You are between the hammer and the anvil in this situation, the team leads. So if you have too many siloed tools, that means team dissatisfaction and burnout. If you have frozen or declined budgets, that means potential team burnout and lower performance, right? Because even if the team is performing, you as a manager, even if your people are doing the best that they can, you as a manager respond for the end result, not for the effort your people are putting in. So if you do heavy and lengthy implementations, team focus is diverted from the core activities and moved elsewhere. If you have a technology mismatch, then you have impaired team cohesion, right? Because everybody will actually uh, not get along with everybody else. Everybody will manage different pieces. And also you have complex vendor management because usually vendor management is not done by the operators, is done by the team lead, right? We don't need to put more pressure on the operators. They have enough pressure already. And last but not least, if the day-to-day -day operations are complicated with the tools that you choose, communication and reporting issues will be the biggest problem. And then you're also going to have higher probability of human error. That's why everybody's buzzing with AI, 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 because we want to eliminate the human error. AI will never replace fully cybersecurity people uh, in the industry. I can promise you guys that. Now, before we meet to move to the big bosses, because I see the majority of people are operators and uh, the leads of the teams, I see a few of the big bosses there that I recognize. But before we move to the big bosses and uh, put some attention on them, I want to bring another question in the cyber trivia. Let's see how many licenses we give out in this one. 30 seconds, you guys need to let me know. Out of 100% of current cybersecurity leads, this is managers, SOC, opera, SOC leads, and so on. How many are estimated to leave their jobs, even switch careers by 2025? Do it in percentage. Let's see, people are already pushing in. 30%, 30%, 90%, 45% Richard, 35% Craig. Let's see. Nurul, 40%, JN. We have 25, 33, Nurul, 40% again, Dave, 75%, Christian, 50%. And the lucky winner is Christian with 50%. Exactly. So based on Gartner, 50% of leads in cybersecurity, and I believe this also includes uh, the CISO that's also doing operation and all of that, 50% of these will change roles and industries. So they will no longer work in cyber by the end of 2025. And half of them said this is purely due to the unsustainable stress levels that are pushed to, on them. The other half, they're just, they're, they just think they're, they're kind of fighting a losing battle and nobody actually gets them, right? So that's why. Uh, yeah, Christian is on the roll. On a roll, somebody says in the chat, which is uh, which is true. Okay, let's also uh, award forty-five and fifty-five percent. Richard is forty-five. Richard, you're on this one as well. Let's see, did anybody go forty-five percent? Okay, nobody get, uh, went forty-five. So Richard, you won this one as well. And guys, this is coming from Gartner. Now let's get back to those big bosses. Big bosses. What do you guys think will happen? to a big boss, to the one that signs and approves everything, if they have too many tools that are not communicating with them. Let's see. Any opinions from you guys? I talked so much that I need to take some, uh, some liquid in. So I'll just let you guys uh, help me with the webinar. Come on. Nobody? Ah, let, let's see those MSPs. What was the question? Okay. So 
what happens to what's the problem for a CISO or the highest leader of cybersecurity in the organization when you have too many tools? Alf says it's frustration. Then somebody else help me out. Alert fatigue. Yes, this is important. What to choose and why, Christian? Very good. Guys, too much choice. Exactly. Guys, the first thing that ha happens to them is budget inefficiency. Because at the point, the, the, the C members, they discuss in budget, right? Budget and risk. That's their playground, right? Uh, and you're also going to have cybersecurity gaps because if you have too many tools, they don't talk to each other, you will not have a cohesive cybersecurity program. And Yen says there is no strategy when you have too many silo tools. You guys are right. What about frozen or declined budgets? Let's see. Mukesh is up to it already. What about when a CISO is dealing with frozen or declined budgets? And again, guys, I'm saying CISO because you all know the CISO role. This can be an MSSP, an MSP, a virtual CISO, right? No innovation, product challenges. Okay, that's good. Quit the job. Exactly, Christian. It's basically they are forced into a heightened risk acceptance, which means I know that the lion that is in that bush will 90% jump on me when I pass nearby the bush and I am forced to pass nearby the bush, right? And I will hope for that 10%. The lion might be distracted with something else and it will not jump on me. And that carries frustration, quitting the job and so on and so forth. You are right. Then with heavy and lengthy implementations, you have increased time to value. And why is that important for a leader in cybersecurity? Because if I pay today for something that gives me value in six months, I believe that's a bit of a problem, right? Because I have paid, I gave my part of the deal, right? And then I have implementation, configuration, uh, configuration is part of implementation, training, uh, then uh, uh, ar arranging all the logs and everything. And six months, Alf says something important here. And by the way, guys, uh, Alf has a very interesting background in cybersecurity and consultancy. I won't give you his last name, but uh, he knows his way around this and he's, uh, he's in the industry for a long time now. Six months is a good return on investment. That's what he actually says. Okay. And also Christian says something very interesting. In six months, the technology might be ancient already, right? Think about that as well. So increased time to value for the CISO is a, it's a killer, right? This added on the other stresses that they have, right? It's already too much. Let's see another stress for them. Technology mismatch. Misalignment with business goals, unfortunately. The business needs to be protected. However, he cannot do it with the technology that you have. You can either have too many features that you pay for, right? Imagine this. If you guys need a car to go to the grocery store, do you buy a Bentley? Or do you buy a regular sedan or a pickup truck? But do you buy a Bentley or a Ferrari or a Lamborghini? Let's, I'm, I'm not doing advertising for any of the car brands. But would you buy a Bentley to go to the grocery store? No, that's technology mismatch. I don't need that, but I'll get it because it's, it's the best in the industry. Determine what you need first and then find the best for you, not the best in the industry because there's no silver bullet. There's no one size fits all. As each person is unique, even twins or triplets are actually unique. Even if we don't see it, they are unique. There's no person in the world that's the same with another person. That's the same with companies. All companies are different. It doesn't matter if they're in the same industry, doing the same revenue, it doesn't matter. All companies are unique. Oh. I love my tangents, right? And complicated day-to-day -day management. What does this mean for my leader? It means reduced visibility and a very challenged scalability, right? So if you expand, if you buy more companies and uh, you integrate them in them, if you create more business units, it's complicated, right? Because you need to add a lot of overhead with each enhancement in your scale, uh, in your 
full-scale process. Okay, guys, you've stuck with me so long, so far. So I, I do need to tell you, because somebody's asking here, okay, uh, Andre, you're telling us problems, <laughs> but what are what are the solutions and uh, people that are saying i have to leave uh, is there a recording yes you will get it directly in the follow up email i'm sorry you need to leave but you are covered then one of the solutions is unification right because we don't want too many tools we want a seamless implementation we want fast time to value so this xdr concept that has been all over the internet, all over the news lately, this is the latest acronym in cybersecurity. Uh, how does this help us, right? So I've been asked by popular demand to never go with the concept without putting out the definition. The definition is extended detection and response, often shortened as XDR, is a vendor-specific software as a service that offers holistic, optimized cybersecurity by integrating multiple layers into one simplified solution and i should have underlined and bolded simplified solution then before the xdr terminology vendors that were approaching this were just naming it naming it unified cybersecurity because you might see both of them in the market and why not then if this is XDR, let's get back to our problems. Complicated day-to-day -day operations, technology mismatch, too many tools, frozen or stopped budgets, heavy and lengthy implementations. Let's see if we can figure it out together, how to look at the best solution for you. Okay, just scratch the XDR, the best solution set for you. It can be XDR, it can be unified security, you name it how you want it, right? Multiple layers working together for your organization, right? Let's figure this out together. If we are looking at too many tools, what could we do to switch this and go from the problem to the solution? Help me out in the chat. Because again, let's figure this out together, not just me by myself. Okay, nobody? Consolidation, exactly. And if we want to consolidate, we need to check what is the coverage of the platform that I'm going to get. But before that, check what do you need internally. After that, check if that coverage matches and make sure it doesn't exceed, right? Because if you're not using 80% uh, of your activity in the cloud, do you need a cloud access security broker? No, you don't, right? But everybody says that's the super great end all be all. So you're buying that, but you're not using it, right? Alf, uh, somebody said something interesting. I believe it was Alf. You don't need a hammer to crack an egg, right? Needs versus manageability. That's what Mukesh is saying. Well done, Mukesh. Uh, I also have the reactions. I think I can applaud you. Yes, I can applaud you. So I just applauded you. Okay, second problem that we have on the page, I believe it's frozen or declined budgets. Okay, how do we switch this into something that we should look for when we buy cybersecurity in general, so that this is to our advantage? Use the question box, guys. Let me know, what do we look at? Better discounts, okay, that's good. Okay. Cost consolidation through tool consolidation, that's good. And I would add something. Look at something called total cost of ownership. Because if you buy a car, right? You buy a car. How much is that car costing you? You pay some uh, cash upfront. Let's say, let's do some very weird numbers, right? We talked about Lamborghinis. Let's say $200,000, right? Is that Lamborghini costing you just $200,000? That's my question. Do a yes or no or a reaction emoji, anything. Is that car costing you? Exactly, no, no, no. Because you have maintenance, you have gas, you have a lot of things involved. Guys, be very careful. In the industry, there are some tools I will not name names. You guys might know what they are. Be careful. There are some tools that are volume or data driven right so they bill you at the end of the month or the quarter 
on how much data they have stored or processed for you. And I see people in the chat putting the names over there. I will not read them out loud. You guys already know them. Guys, make sure uh, you get the total cost of ownership. And by the way, you don't need to take screenshots. Uh, I had our team help me with the document, with the checklist for you guys, with these key points and why you should look at, into them. Next up, we have heavy and lengthy implementations. We need to look for a tool set that has a good time to value. That means the implementation is straightforward. It won't have too many conflicts with our network and so on and so forth. Technology mismatch, we need to make sure that this is effective for us, right? It needs to have the features we need, not less, not more, because for everything that is extra, you pay more. And you pay in both cost and time, right? Because your team needs more processes, more training, and so on and so forth. Some people in statistics, they use about 40% of the capacities that their tools have to offer. Why is that? Again, uh, breaking an egg with a hammer or going shopping with a Lamborghini, right? I don't know how the roads are in your country, but in uh, supermarket parking spaces where they dent your car with their other uh, with the other car's door or anything like that, I will not go with the Lamborghini at the supermarket. I swear. Then complicated day-to-day -day operations. Switch this into ease of use. Go and look at those platforms that simplify cybersecurity. Don't overcomplicate it. Make it easier because I need less people. My people will not be burnt out. They will not be stressed. They will not have alert fatigue, right? This is the future where we're making, we're, we're doing less is more, not more is less, right? And more is less at the point. Now, with that being said, this is the combination that you guys need to make sure that you look for whenever you choose what solution you go for, right? This is the combination that I personally recommend. And I accept challenges. So if anyone wants to take screenshots or whatever and put it on LinkedIn and tag me and say, Andre, you do not know what you're talking about. Let's have a debate. I welcome that. Cool. Let's see what's next. By the way, guys, I don't see my preview on the slides anymore. So this is super, super, super uh, weird for me as well. So I told you uh, the two unknowns. This is the third unknown. Who is Heimdall? A lot of you guys know. A lot of you guys don't. Heimdall is a multi-award winning cybersecurity solution. We come out of Denmark out of Copenhagen. And let's see what's next. Heimdall offers to their clients multiple tools unified in one console. And we have over 15,000 business to business customers worldwide in multiple industries. And now cyber trivia, the last trivia question for today. How many endpoints do you guys think we secure? Let me know who is the last winner of today's cyber trivia. I, I'm curious who opens our website the fastest. 45 million, 150,000, 15 million. Okay, Malte won this one, 2.5 million. I believe you were the fastest to go online. If not, thank you for knowing that. Indeed, we are covering over 2.5 million endpoints currently which is an honor for us. And the people that are using this, as you can go to all of these websites, you will see they placed an honest review and they like it, right? Now, I promised you that we will do a quick tour of Heimdall. This is how Heimdall works, right? We have all these layers, all of them communicate in a unified platform. This is fed to our Manage Extended Detection and Response team, and they can help you react in cases. And that's another cool space over there. We had a webinar on the MXDR. We will not touch on that. But in those layers that you see up top, these are the products that you can find. And I have promised you guys a quick, quick five minute tour of the platform. So let's get on to that. Let me connect to the Heimdall platform. Let me make sure that I still have my login functional. No, I don't. Okay, let's see. So this is the Heimdall console. 
from the get-go you can see that you have all the interesting information that you need you can move these around and put the layers that you are most interested let's say i'm interested in patching i want to see patching first right maybe i'm interested in os patching i want to see the second and so on and so forth when it comes to managing my computers i just have a huge list of actions that i can do i can take one computer and here's all the things that i can do i can wake it I can make it a priority update server for updates. I can isolate, scan their network for non-Heimdall devices, add it to a management group, install things, uninstall, antivirus scan, and so on and so forth. A lot of details just for your benefit over here. You can see a history of server commands and so on. Products, I have all the products here. I'll start with patching just as a random example. And I have multiple views that I can use all the views under patching or any other product, you can actually extract them as reports, aside of automated reports that happen. When it comes to settings, it's as easy as creating groups, setting up what needs to happen in a group. And whenever I change something in this group, for example, I can do it across the board with a click of a button, right? Make it easier for me. But the thing that I wanted to, uh, that glues everything together, I wanted to show you guys a bit today, is the Threat Hunting in Action Center. This is where it gets interesting, right? Because now I can see on a global scale, and I'll just put more information here so that I can see a lot of uh, time span. Now, I see a lot of things happening here. I see groups of computers in this region, in Romania, Germany. I see some in the US, right? And this is my webinar VM, which if this was a real computer IT would make me quit my job, right? I have a lot of dangerous things on it. And now I can start threat hunting intelligently, right? I see that this computer has max score on antivirus, third party patching. This is uh, machine learning detections on my traffic. And this is pure traffic that was malicious, right? And this is, this is basically the level of depth that you can go into you also have an action center showing you risk score analysis and in the action center you will see exactly what are the things happening and you can check one action automate it going further and in that moment you can have that action repeating itself automatically right let's see i have a question oh somebody says why don't you have mfa this is a demo environment. It's not attached to anything in production. So just to uh, avoid putting in the code and wasting your time, I prefer it this way. You can also do aggregated alerts. And th the basic idea is it's graphical. You see the risk score for your organization and you have automated actions that you can do, which are recommended based on the alert type. You don't need to guess anymore. You don't need to open the biggest research in the world anymore. You have automated detection responses to certain detections. You can even see where the communication is going on the globe if it's a bad request. But I, I won't tell you everything because then you will not book some time with me or uh, book a demo, right? But I do want to tell you a few other things before we stop the presentation, right? So the three golden takeaways I want to give you from this webinar are the following. Cybersecurity industry is going to some very interesting times. You actually, because I'm no longer working frontline in cyber, right? Since I'm not implementing, managing and so on. You are the unsung heroes that need to do more with less while attackers have very few limitations and lots of resources. One of the solutions that you can use, one of a few, is XDR, right? It will enable you to do less, to do uh, more with less, actually. Revert what's on the screen over there, I apologize. And when you look at XDR, not all of them are built the same, and that's okay. You don't need to look at the vendor and say, hey, you're not okay or you're not okay. Everybody is the best choice for a certain profile of an organization. Do not let the industry tell you what is the best. You identify what you need, and then you find the best for you, not what the industry tells you is best. Next, I have a quick, quick question for you. 
This is a second poll that I want to launch for you. Let me see. Tools, polls. Okay. So, do you think for your organization, do you need a solution that covers this set of factors, right? And the answers are yes, but I don't need it soon. Yes, early next year in the next budget. Yes, right now. Maybe I need more information or no, we already have something similar and we're all good. Let's see. I'll just give you a few seconds while I hydrate. Okay, let's get back. Okay. Let's see. Good. Ending poll and sharing results. So maybe I need the more information is the winner here. Then we have a tie on second place. No, our organization is good. And yes, right now. For the people that want this or need this right now or in the nearby future, guys, you can ask for a demo and somebody saying, yes, we're good because we are already using it. Thank you. That's again, another uh, shameless ego plug of mine over here. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. You know, I'm funny, right? So I made for you guys a checklist based on this webinar, right? What to look for when you're choosing cybersecurity solutions. You can download this from the related resources. And if you cannot find the related resources in this new view, just email me or call me and I'll give it to you. Then we have two other related resources that might be useful, the data sheet and the product brief for the Heimdall XTR. My next webinar is going to be about endpoint security, and I will have a venture capitalist cybersecurity leader, right? This is a cybersecurity leader that does cybersecurity for the entire group of companies something heavy, right? It's going to be on the 19th of October. Be on the lookout for emails on that. And with that being said, if you want to connect with me, you can book a 15 minutes chat, scan that QR code, right? Or you can connect on LinkedIn, scan that QR code. And for the book a demo, you need to go in the webinar survey and just mark yes over there. And now I'll take your questions. Sorry if I, we went a bit fast, but uh, we had a lot of ground to cover. Questions, questions, questions. Let's see. Uh, cool. I recommend the 15 minutes go through. Okay. Thank you, Christian, for recommending them. <laughs> okay. Let's see other questions. How much time would this take to implement? Well, it depends, but I would say that in maximum one week you're up and running with everything installed configured training done day-to-day -day operations done internal communications done maximum one week something like that and we also have support customer success that would help you with that do i need active directory for this no you don't but active directory could help you okay this application, the new GoToWebinar, has a bit of a problem with poor uh, internet, but new features are good. Thank you for that. I will share that feedback with them. Okay, guys. Uh, good. Anything else? If you go XDR with yourself, can we review analytics you, with this monthly to tailor them? Let's do this. Let's connect in the 15 minutes meeting and you can explain this in a bit more detail. Uh, guys, again, the post webinar uh, survey, this is very important for me because these sessions are for you. And if I don't understand how to make these better for you, I'll just do them how I consider that they should be. But the platinum rule says give people what they want, not what you would like to have given to you. So with that being said, thank you for joining do start threads of communication take any screenshots you want challenge me on linkedin do it on email if you want to be more private and if anybody of your friends missed the session and you want to uh, to, to have them on the session have them join the second session in the afternoon thank you and wishing you a great day bye-bye